Hi guys, we have another, wow, smoke choked day. You're in the end times in what should be literally paradise on the slopes of Mount Rainier in Washington State. Hopefully the rain moving in tonight and washing out this goddamn smoke here on this Saturday morning, August 12th, 2017. I, I tried to do this rant already, but the number of clueless morons here in the campground have driven me into the truck. So before I pack it up and head it out of here, heading north, just need to do what I do every Saturday morning, and that's bring you my clueless moron roundup rant as I am surrounded by clueless fucking morons here in paradise. I'm not sure whether the batteries on my camera or computer are going to make it through. So uh, if this rant dies suddenly, I'm not going to repeat it. But without beating a dead horse into the ground this week. I'm just going to get this opening story out of the way and then think of something else to talk about. As Donald Trump warns, threats will be met with fire and fury, North Korea examining a plan to strike Guam. There you go. Uh, I don't need to open up another can of worms with what I call now the Kim Jong Un deniers, the little lefty peaceniks denying the dangers of a Kim Jong Un every bit as much as these right wing fucking conspiratars denying the dangers of climate change. But that's another rant for another day. So, while uh, the U.S. and North Korea decide what to do with their own dirty little war, here is China says countdown for war with India has begun. 10, 9, 8, 7. Um, the relationship between India and China seemed to worsen Wednesday when the Chinese Foreign Ministry said that 53 people and an Indian bulldozer were in Chinese territory and advised India to pull them back. Hmm. This followed a warning on Tuesday when an editorial in the state-run China Daily said that the, quote, countdown to a clash between the two forces has begun. Uh, there you go. Uh, this is all referring to a border standoff between the two countries that has continued for over two months. The controversy began when India opposed China's plan to extend a border road through a disputed plateau, which Bhutan says is its region. Uh, India and Bhutan have historically maintained strong relations. So there you go. Uh, who needs the South China Sea and the Middle East and uh, North Korea when the countdown has begun for the new India-China war? Speaking of wars, <laughs> you know guys again, this is one of these headlines that the onion could not have made up. I anyone uh, denying at this point that we're living in the middle of a uh, of a uh, 
I'm having a senior moment, not outer limits, but that other one. Although, call it outer limits. We are. We have reached the outer limits here in 2017. Unexploded World War II bomb found at Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant. An unexploded bomb. You know, while they're digging around trying to uh, figure out what the fuck they're going to do about this big mess from Fukushima for the first time ever. Coming across an unexploded bomb in a, uh, <laughs> in a nuclear power plant. La -da -da -da. Okay. Many versions of this story. It's actually two stories. Virtually identical stories happening twice this week. As sm and, 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 and there's so many clueless fucking morons in this story. Uh, I, I don't know where to begin or end. Just pick your clueless moron of the pick of the litter. Smugglers reportedly toss overboard up to 180 migrants near Yemen. Scores of migrants, you know, from Africa were forced overboard by smugglers off the coast of Yemen. Uh, the second such incident in as many days, up to 180 people were forced off a boat on Thursday. At least five confirmed dead, 50 are still missing. To go on top of the ones uh, from the day before, uh, I, I like this... this as you dig deeper into this story, Yemen, although racked by civil war, has become a destination for migrants from the Horn of Africa who are seeking jobs in wealthy Gulf countries. Uh, this is talking to one of these uh, sub-Saharan African huggers. Quote, They are not aware at all that there is a war in Yemen. Sometimes they don't even believe us when we explain it to them. Just by making land, they feel they are halfway to wealthy. Uh, estimates are that about 55,000 migrants have left the Horn of Africa for Yemen so far this year, most, most coming from Somalia and Ethiopia, uh, going back to the sub-Saharan African hugger. Some are coming for the third time. They didn't succeed, so they went back home, but the parents did not agree with the fact that they did not succeed, so they sent them back, and they have no choice. Good Lord. International agencies say 111,500 refugees and migrants arrived in Yemen last year, contributing to a humanitarian crisis in that country. Again, uh, there's so many levels of clueless morons. Uh, and I guess this one, maybe from the day before, anyway, at least 56 dead as smugglers throw 300 African migrants into Yemen Sea. Uh, somehow this one slipped out of my Donald Trump roundup rant. Not exactly Donald Trump. This is a Donald Trump advisor 
suggests that Minneapolis mosque attack is a, quote, fake hate crime. On Saturday around 5 a.m., a bomb was thrown into the Dar el Farouk Islamic Center as people were preparing for morning prayers. While there was extensive property damage, no one was injured in the attack. Donald Trump has not condemned the attack, and now one of his advisors is suggesting that the incident might be a fake hate crime. This is Trump advisor Sebastian Gorka. Uh, explaining, we've had a series of crimes committed, alleged hate crimes by right-wing individuals in the last six months that turned out to actually have been propagated by the left. There you go. Uh, anyway, uh, the FBI is continuing to investigate the mosque attack. Uh, the only statement so far is calling it a terrible crime. There you go, from fake hate crimes from those old lefty peaceniks. It's those goddamn lefty peaceniks uh, throwing bombs into mosques. Probably the same lefty peaceniks acting like Kim Jong-un is about as big a threat to anybody um, as, I don't know, Sancho Panza is a threat to a Bigfoot. What is going on with uh, my favorite clueless fucking moron industry on the planet, the cruise industry? Quote, she was a ghost ship. This cruise ship spent ten nights in darkness because of pirates. There you go. It sounds like something out of Captain Phillips, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean, but for the 1,900 clueless fucking morons aboard a 104-day cruise around the world, the fear of getting attacked by pirates was all too real. A, a cruise aboard the Sea Princess departing from Sydney, Australia underwent a 10-day nightly blackout period uh, as it traveled near Somalia. During those times, there were, quote, no deck parties, no movies under the stars, no late-night outdoor bar hopping, or pool dipping. Yes, instead, uh, passengers were advised to sit on the floor and to hang on to handrails in case the ship had to maneuver away from pirates. There you go. All right, from uh, the cruise ship industry to dancing in Iran. Iran arrests six people for dancing the Zumba. Of course, your old clueless fucking moron Hambone has no clue what the Zumba is. It's some sort of exercise dance routine. Women ex or, uh, Iran has arrested six people for teaching Zumba dance classes to children, accusing them of trying to, quote, change lifestyles in the Islamic Republic. The group of four men and two women were charged over their dancing 
and for not adhering to the country's strict hijab dress code. Is that hijab, hijab? You know, those things that they wear over their faces. Um, quote, the members of a network teaching and filming Western dances have been identified and arrested. They were arrested by the guards intelligence forces while teaching and creating video clips. There you go. From Iran to India. Now I'm not exactly sure why this made it into a clueless moron roundup rant. I just enjoyed this story. Uh, as I always do when I read stories similar to this. Rogue elephant tramples 15 people to death in India and now faces culling. Culling. Yeah, I bet he faces culling. Uh, an elephant that has killed 15 people in eastern India over a months long rampage could be shot within days if it is not brought under control. Violent encounters between elephants and humans are becoming a quote increasing trend as vast swaths of forest meaning as vast swaths of elephant homeland are cleared for human settlements or industry. There you go. Uh, from elephants to goats just down the street from me, sheriff's deputy fatally shoots Portland goat. We thought just the elephants had it bad. Authorities say a sheriff's deputy shot and killed a goat that escaped from a Portland farm. Sergeant Dave Thompson of the Washington County Sheriff's Office tells says that the deputy felt threatened by the goat's size and horns so he had no other choice after making several attempts to stop it Sunday, to stop it from doing what, as it was not explained. Farmer Matt Minnick says he feels partly at fault for allowing his goat to escape, but doesn't agree that shooting it was necessary. He says seven-year-old children are able to deal with goats. Volt, the billy goat named Volt, was a $1,200 uh, rare breed from New Zealand that the farmer says is known for its calm temperament. Okay. Now that this this next story, you've probably heard it. I don't know. I just didn't know where else to put this. About this model talks about terrifying alleged kidnap for sale as sex slave. A British model has told reporters about her alleged ordeal at the hands of kidnappers, who she says planned to auction her off as a sex slave to the highest bidder on the dark web. I need to do a rant on the rise of the dark web. I haven't done a dark web rant here on this dark little corner of cyberspace. This is Chloe Ailing, age 20, um, said she did not know during her week-long captivity, whether she would survive to tell the story. Apparently, her kidnappers uh, 
uh, found out she was a mother, and that's why she got uh, she got released after being attacked, drugged, handcuffed, and closed inside a suitcase. There you go. And so I guess they have this suspect, uh, Lukasz Powell Herba, a Polish citizen, was taken into custody. A letter found during a search of a black death computer following Herba's arrest explained... Uh, her, you know, uh, laid out rules for her to follow once free, including, quote, you and your family will in no way ever talk about us in bad language and without respect. I would, I would shudder to use bad language and and disrespectful language talking about someone kidnapping a 20-year-old model and selling her into sex slavery on the dark web. That sounds like a pretty respectable guy to me. Okay, let's look at some of the various... <clears throat> well... Oh, this is not a mother of the year. This is cousin of the year. Arizona woman sentenced to death for murder of 10-year-old cousin. An Arizona woman was sentenced to death on Monday for killing her 10-year-old cousin, who she locked to the murdering fucking bitch, who deserves to fucking die because we need more capital punishment on this planet, not less. Uh, stick that one in your pipe and smoke it, you little lefty peace nicks. Uh, anyway, where was I? An Arizona woman was sentenced to death on Monday for killing her 10-year-old cousin, who she locked inside a small storage bin as punishment for taking a popsicle without permission. There you go. So I'm sure anyone, all the uh, Kim Jong-un deniers will think that this woman killing a 10-year-old child for taking a popsicle is, is, is someone we need to keep around on this planet. Is just a shining member of humanity. Uh, the fucking bitch deserves to die. Alright. Uh, good for the state of Arizona. Here is... The, I guess this is mother of the year who didn't wait for... Uh, to get uh, the electric chair as she deserved because she took herself out. Suicide notes of mom who killed her kids and then herself revealed, quote, I hope you rot. Authorities have revealed the suicide note penned by a mother who killed her own children her estranged husband's girlfriend, and then herself in South Carolina last month. This is a, a real loss to the planet. Uh, Jessica Edens, who shot both of her children in the head before turning the gun on herself, thereby saving the taxpayers of South Carolina probably millions of fucking dollars to keep this bitch alive. And uh, she left a note to her ex-husband, Ben, quote, I hope you rot one day for what you have done to me and my kids. There you go. Okay. Now, 
I honestly don't know if this is an update on an earlier story I covered, or, or I think it's a brand new story. Daycare worker faces charges after boy found dead in van. I think this is a, a second one of these we've heard uh, this summer. A Florida daycare van driver will face criminal charges after a child was found dead inside the vehicle at the end of a sweltering summer day. Um, Orlando police said that three-year-old Miles Hill spent more than 11 hours, 11 hours in the daycare van outside the Little Miracles Academy before he was discovered Monday night. Okay, here is, I don't know, this is a combination of babysitters of the week and mother of the week and uh, just a little slice of the the teenagers we are leaving this uh, planet to, to clean up the mess we made. Teen babysitters laugh as they put child in refrigerator. A disturbing video shared on Snapchat, Snapchat shows two babysitters placing a baby inside a refrigerator. The two teenage girls have been charged with assault after they posted the video online. This is in Massachusetts. The two girls have been charged with assault and child, endange and child endangerment after posting the disturbing video on social media. Um, the video shows the girls putting the baby in the refrigerator while the baby cries. They laugh as they close the door of the refrigerator while the baby is heard screaming. One girl is heard saying bye as she slams the door of the refrigerator. It is unclear how long the two teenagers kept the baby inside the refrigerator. Clueless fucking, the clueless fucking mother, who I, is not identified here, while the clueless fucking mother expressed concerns over the safety of her child, she also defended the teens. Quote, they thought it was a joke. Oh, this was, I'm sorry, this was her own niece. My niece is a good-hearted girl who would not hurt a fly. I know she would not hurt my daughter, and that was not her intention. I think it was foolishness. Be careful who you leave your children with. You cannot trust anyone, not even your own family. Oh, good Lord, I'm already almost up to 30 minutes. Uh, let's just go through some headlines pretty quick. 14-year-old driver trying to outrun police crashes car and kills two girls. So that's the 14-year-olds of the day. Uh, I'm going to say this one to the very last. Here is... No, this one I'll save to the very last because uh, I don't understand it. But anyway, let's listen to after husband walks out on his pregnant wife, these strangers told her to look in the oven. Every expectant mother has a very clear image in her head of what family life with her brand new bundle of joy will look like. She'll spend months planning every little detail in the hope that absolutely nothing goes wrong. However, 
for an unfortunate few, this is an unrealistic pipe dream, especially if their husband turns out to be just as selfish and unreliable as she'd always suspected her own husband to be. And you're going to have to uh, read this story yourself to find out what she found when she looked at in the oven. And this here's a uh, just a few more. If you like this story, uh, let's see. Uh, there's just so many to choose from. Scientists reveal why you should never use a hair dryer in a hotel. Uh, this revolutionary new face tattoo removal is so satisfying to watch. I reviewed the Kentucky Fried Chicken themed romantic novel and it is utterly insane. There you go. Uh, woman caught biting and hitting her dog on a train. So woman bites dog. Here it is. It's right here. Woman bites dog. There you go. How about Arizona man finds spider scorpion hybrid and none of us will ever sleep again? Uh, here's NASA is defending Earth from aliens. And how about these pictures of peeled fruit? are absolutely terrifying. Uh, 20 animals who are richer than you will ever be. 20 actresses over 70 years old who used to be hot as hell. Uh, and where was it? I don't know, somewhere in here was this couple being arrested for having sex with their dog. Costco has started selling ginormous cheeseburgers and people cannot get enough. But we're going to end not with a Costco cheeseburger or a Costco pizza, which I am fine, fond of, but a Costco chicken salad. Several versions of this story to wind up this clueless moron round and round. A woman is suing Costco for a chicken salad that ruined her life. When Chloe Rogers' dad bought rotisserie chicken salad from Costco two years ago. Two years ago. He had no idea what a drastic effect that it would have on his daughter's life. Let's hear some of the what uh, happened to this girl uh, after eating this Costco salad. Uh, anyway, she, they had to remove her entire large intestine. She had to undergo several surgeries and battle staph infections from the surgeries. Uh, then she needed a kidney transplant. She has been hospitalized several times uh, and suffers from, secret, from frequent seizures. Her immune system is still very weak. Uh, and she wants $2 million. And, and I don't blame her. I think it's $2 million. But the question that I have is what the fuck was Chloe Rogerson's dad thinking 
feeding her a two-year-old chicken salad from Costco. Two fucking years. When Chloe Rogerson's dad bought rotisserie chicken salad from Costco two years ago. I mean, just the goddamn chicken that's been in my ice chest for two weeks. I'm getting a little nervous even feeding to Sancho Panza anymore. I mean, he's going to have one last piece of this chicken for breakfast tomorrow. And this fucking Clulon, clueless moron feeding his uh, his own daughter a, a, a Costco chicken salad that he bought two years ago. And, and wondering why his daughter uh, no longer has a large intestine. But I have to wrap up this uh, clueless moron roundup rant because it looks like the ranger is coming to check up on us clueless morons. And I'm going to tell him I am just leaving. There's a 14-day limit here. And I want to spend 30 days on my Bigfoot hunt. So I need to wrap this up quick and start doing some fast talking with the cops. Bye guys.